In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Hi, welcome to the In the Last Days television program with myself, Martin Blackham, with my wife, Natalie Blackham. Great to have you with us. And uh, we're welcoming you wherever you're watching today. And uh, it's a new year. We're into 2015. I know that for uh, the Jewish people, we are already in a new year. But uh, for our uh, viewers in the West and uh, in Europe and in the United Kingdom, it's uh, 2015. So. Uh, Happy New Year to all of our viewers from us. We really appreciate you. It's because of your support that we're able to do the In The Last Days television program. We're going to be talking in a little minute about how you can get involved and how you can support us in the work. But I've got one or two emails, Natalie, to start off with. And great to be together because normally we have a guest and uh, so we're not able to, uh, you know, Natalie's behind the scenes or I'm behind the scenes and today we're together. And this is from Albert. And this is very appropriate for this time of year. It's just, uh, we've just um, uh, come, had a Christmas and New Year. And it says, hi folks, I was out, I, I was at our carols by candlelight this evening. During his sermon, our minister said that when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, it wouldn't be rebuilt again. I think he's wrong because I believe that it has to be built again. Because when he comes to the earth after the rapture, he will sit on David's throne in Jerusalem believe the Antichrist has to sit on it before Christ throws him off it when he returns, which is a very good point, you know, and I think the important thing about the temple, and I know that it's not something maybe today we're going to get into, but the important thing to remember about the temple is that it's in the New Testament. Uh, we've talked about this before, and also uh, it's something which is com- it, it talks about the Antichrist coming to the temple, so we know it's going to be Rebuilt, but at the end of the day, it's God's temple. It's not the Antichrist temple. It's God's and, temple. And Jesus loved the temple. He was pas- he was spending time over there teaching. His parents brought him for the dedication and everything. So it's like it, for every Jewish person, and Jesus was very Jewish. Uh, it was very important, which is interesting because so, so in. Um, I think it's in Matthew or in Luke, there is a big, a beautiful passage that sometimes we can read around Christmas time too, which is not Christmas time, I mean the time of the birth of Jesus. And uh, if you remember, it's like there was a, a prophetess who was there all the time. And there was also, um, there was a man, I can't remember his name just right now like that. Um, but Hegani was over there when they brought Jesus, he knew that he would see the Messiah before dying. So, and it was all, it was at the temple place. It was in, at the place of the temple, so it's very important. So, and you, oh, we speak. By the way, we are. Tr- we're we going to be try. speaking about that yes. for our viewers uh, at home. We're going to be doing uh, some more programs about the temple. We're hoping he's recovering at the moment. To have Rabbi Yehuda Glick, many of you uh, may know that Rabbi Yehuda Glick, who's been a guest on in the last day's television program, was involved in a terrorist attack. He was shot. Uh, he's recovering now. He was on. We saw him the, uh, only last night on BBC Hard Talk, mm-hmm. uh, which some of you may have caught. And um, so he's going to be coming in to talk, and we hopefully will be talking to him. He's one of the the le- leading persons regarding the Temple and the Temple Mount. So you won't want to miss that program that mm-hmm. that's coming up this year, 2015. For the freedom of people to speak on the on the Temple here. Yeah. Now uh, Michael's written in, and Michael said. Um, Greetings. Could you tell me a bit more about the television station studio that you plan to set up? It's, is it for internet only, for example? What do you need and what do you plan to show? Well, um, this is a very good question, Michael. You know, the, the, we need to explain to the people exactly, you know, give them the vision for what we're doing. So we've been in Israel since 2009. We're, we've set up a television studio here. Uh, we still need equipment. There's always equipment that you need, bits and pieces. We still need to pay uh, for equipment. And um, we'll, the, the purpose of it is, first of all, for broadcast, uh, thanks to the support of um, Revelation Television, our friends Hyde and Leslie over, the, over there, uh, that we're able to do this program through, through uh, satellite television. 
we're also able uh, to, to do it on YouTube and hopefully we're also going to be doing live programs uh, as, as we get the equipment right and as we get the, uh, everything right for that that uh, we'll be doing live from Israel and maybe even Natalie I was thinking about this maybe even do this program live that we can mm -hmm. that we'll be, be able quite to fun. that you'll be able to email in whilst we're doing the program and be able to do it to viewers live yeah before that we need to have more support and like we have we 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 bought some equipment for here and we we really need you uh, we have this nine thousand uh, pounds to pay and in two months we have to say okay january february now is pay so if you if you want to pay, if you want to donate, you just go on our website, you find out, you can do it in different ways. Um, but, uh, Martin is very good to explain all these things, <laughs> so um, you can... Well, you've actually pinched what I was going to say. I was just going to say uh, that um, the easiest way to donate is via the website. There's a lot of information there. You can do it uh, for a lot of you saying, well, I, I'm not, I don't have internet or I am not have access to the internet, don't worry. You can do a check or postal order. Uh, payable to Blackham Family Ministries, not in the Last Days TV program, Blackham Family Ministries, and send it to our good friends Steve and Lorraine Holmes Stewart, who are at 2 Winham Drive, Fairham, uh, Hampshire, and we'll put all the um, details of uh, where you can send the check or cross postal order, and that's to Blackham Family Ministries. You can do that. You can also uh, write to us. Uh, at our address and we'll put that on the screen uh, in Israel. Uh, we will send you a direct debit form. I think I might even have one uh, here. Uh, maybe not. I thought I had one. Oh yes, here I have. Here it is. If you want to write to us or email us and we'll send you a direct debit form and you can um, fill that in and then just pop that into your bank and make uh, a regular payment which is important, you know, it's people who make regular payments that make the program uh, possible. You can also do, if you're very good with um, internet, you can also do PayPal, and we c just email us and we can tell you how to do that. And, um, you know, if you only have cash, you can also go into Barclays Bank and uh, just, e just uh, write to us and we will tell you how you can do that. So di lots of different ways that you can support us this year. And well, your support is really making a difference because the program is going out via Revelation Television and is making a difference. It's bringing enlightenment. Yeah. One of our guests uh, on the program said the other day, it's, it's helping people to understand Israel, helping people to see uh, what's going on in Israel and helping people to keep up with the news, with what's happening. And we'll come on to the news. There's so much happening at the moment. Now, Winnie wrote in and said, we must become Judean Christians and not Roman Catholic Christians. So... Which is, which is very interesting. It's like we must be Christians who see things from a Jewish perspective or have our Jewish roots is a, is a very good way of, but, of but we are all, putting that. We, we need, when we discover things, we need to be also very gentle with the others because we are all on the way. Um, and it's like if we have more light because we are most, we are, we've studied, this is great. And we, but we still need to have the grace to know how to bring in to the people and to our neighbors or to our people who know a bit less because uh, they might be where we've, we were before. And we need to be very gracious with each other. And, you know, he's, it, we, we just need to be careful. And, and this, you know, we don't need to put etiquettes on people, labels, because uh, we are not labels. We, we, ha we are a soul. And the thing is, we need to look, and it is one of the things that I wanted to speak today, which is interesting that it's coming up like that, is that we have to look after our soul. Now, we have a body, but we have our body because we need to have a body for our soul. But when we're on earth, God gives us the privilege to be able to learn things and to build our character. And so we are put in front of different people because we can help each other like that, and it's very, it's very important. And it's interesting what you are saying. I think one of the things that we need to do this year is learning, learning, learning. And because with all the things that are happening, uh, I mean, there is so much things that are happening. We can't, you know, we can't catch with what's happening in the world. You, can't, you can speak only about certain events because they are rolling into each other. 
which is very much so people sometimes are so afraid about what's happening. I would say, no, yes, there is perilous time, but at the same time, you can see there is a lot of gracious time and God is coming close to his people. We can see a lot of Jewish people coming back here. We can feel the presence of God coming here more and more. And we can, we can feel that his, his presence is coming more, more and more important. Like the Temple Mount is getting more important because it is in his timetable. And before, people didn't have even the, the, the way of hearing about it. Like the media wasn't there, but now there is like, it's quite amazing, you know, with, with all that's happening. So we need to know that there is terrible things happening, but it's like when a, a mother is having a baby, and you know how it is, it's like sudden, you know, it's like the contraction has slowly, but suddenly they are accelerating and, and the baby is coming and we are coming into this messianic time. And even, you know, we were, we had the privilege of speaking with a rabbi uh, not long after, in fact, I'm going to do this story next about what happened at Harnaf. Harnaf is a district of Jerusalem and we were privileged to visit it recently uh, to a rabbi's house in an area not too far from where an attack took place, which I'm just going to talk about. But the rabbi was saying to us that, you know, these are signs, these are end time signs of what we're seeing in the world. Now, this is quite shocking, and uh, many of you may know about this. This is, it says, uh, four rabbis killed in Jerusalem synagogue massacre. And um, if I can just put that there for one second, I'll tell you about the story. Now, it says four prominent rabbis, including three US, U.S. citizens and one British citizen, were brutally murdered in a terrorist attack at a Western Jerusalem synagogue. This was in Harnoff, two, um, that left seven other men seriously wounded. The attack took place seven o'clock in the morning when two Palestinians entered uh, from East Jerusalem, um, entered, stormed the Kehilit Benai Torah synagogue in Harnoff. Uh, wielding axes, knives and a pistol to attack its more than 30 congregants, police said. According to witnesses, the terrorists shouted Allah Akbar. Yeah, they before... weren't pa sorry, they weren't Palestinians. They were, they were Arabs, Muslim Arabs. You need to know because they were I with Israeli cards. So it's important to know. And they entered from the, um, uh, from the entrance and shouted, and according to witnesses, the terrorists shouted Allah Akbar before proceeding to kill and maim the victims. The four fatalities were identified as Rabbi Arye Kopinski, 43, Rabbi Avraham Shmuel Goldberg, 68, the one who was from the United Kingdom, Rabbi Kalman Zvin Levin, 55, and Rabbi Moshe Tversky, 59, all from Har Nof. Um, and also there was two uh, Israeli policemen were killed, uh, sorry, one Israeli policeman was killed in the gunfight and another one was seriously uh, wounded. Uh, the funerals f for the four rabbis took place almost immediately really in the afternoon mm -hmm. and the seven surviving victims were rushed to the capital's Sher Sedek Medical Center and Hadassim University Medical Clinic. So this was a, a, a huge thing in Israel. There was a, it was, um, a great shock to Israel, this uh, Islamic terrorist attack uh, against a synagogue and against yeah. people praying. And it's also a place where usually they won't have attacks because it's a very Jewish area, it's not in East Jerusalem, you know, none of that. So I think for them to know that they came this way, I um, mean, somewhere working in the, in the area, but like that these things happen early in the morning. Now we need to know, so as us, uh, it might not be so important, but for them, for the Jewish people, it was four rabbis. They were uh, very well-known rabbis and, and accomplished rabbis, I would say, and they were praying. So they were with the Talit and they were with the uh, Tefillim. So for them, being murdered in this, in this, uh, at, this at that special time uh, is like a holy time for them. It's, it's even more than just being killed in a normal, you know, in a normal way outside of a synagogue. He means that these two Arabs uh, came, came in the synagogue and for them it was something uh, like a sacred thing that was put in, you know, like in, in who burst into pieces. I mean, it was, a, it was devastating because it was all over the news media in Israel. 
uh, something very serious and uh, a worst terrorist attack we've had in Israel for a, f for a few years. Now, there was also one a few years ago against uh, a yeshiva mm -hmm. and there was a, a terrorist attack against that and again that was a, a terrible thing. It yeah. was but it wasn't during a time of prayer. You see, there is really something sacred that w maybe we don't understand. And I, I have a friend, you know, a friend from France, and she told me, you know, because I have your news, I know there is like four rabbis. Nothing was said in where she lives. Uh, nothing was said about rabbis. For her, it was just seven people, uh, four, four people in uh, in Israel who was just killed. And so I, it's it's quite important to know that. And and you know the and interesting. Sorry, I just wanted to say one thing, and is that we we want take the opportunity also to tell you if you want to have some news, we we do um, a newsletter every week to give you what's happening here and to give you also how we feel about the things. Sometimes teaching, you know, it depends of, of what's happening around, but we want to connect with you. So if you want to have this newsletter, you just go again on our website. It's free. You just click to subscribe and you can just receive it every week. And because of um, what's happened just as we're coming uh, to you today with the program, we've had uh, yesterday uh, an, a, pa a terrorist attack in Paris mm -hmm. um, where 10 journalists were killed and... Um, two French police officers were killed. Uh, this is the headlines from the Daily Telegraph. It says, War on Freedom, and we have the uh, five of the journalists uh, underneath on that, from the Daily Telegraph. This is the Times uh, newspaper today as we are coming into the studio. It's an attack on freedom. And this um, terrorist attack uh, in Paris, uh, absolutely unbelievable that um, terrorists went into the magazine, and Natalie knows the name in, and in Charlie, French. Charlie Hebdo, yeah, and is in Paris. And uh, okay, carry on. And so the the terrorists, these were Islamic terrorists. Uh, we now believe are out. I mean, the news is fast unfolding, and things may well have happened by the time we come. This comes to the broadcast, but at the time we're broadcasting, um, these were Al Qaeda terrorists who came into this into the um, offices of uh, the magazine and killed, uh, it says, this is the report from um, the Daily Telegraph, it says, with ruthless precision, two masked Al-Qaeda gunmen calmly fired eight shots. This was at the, actually at the unarmed policeman outside the, um, um, the, the magazine office. Mm -hmm. It says, earlier two gunmen armed with automatic rifles stormed the office of the satirical magazine a target for Islamic terrorists since it printed cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad in 2006 and, 2000 and 2011 and killed cartoonists and satirists whose names were called out as they were shot dead in turn. They actually named the people and then uh, shot, uh, shot them. And they said, uh, this, the um, killers said, we have avenged the Prophet. The killers shouted in accents. Uh, Fra it's France's worst terrorist attack in a generation was also meticulously planned. The killers not only memorized the names of those they wanted to kill, they'd also planned their getaway well enough to evade uh, police. Mm -hmm. uh, David Cameron, the United Kingdom Prime Minister, says an act of indescribable barbarity has been committed today in Paris. And, and uh, he's among the world leaders who's condemned the murders as an attack on free yes. speech. And the Prime Minister, that Netanyahu also was very good to to send, and we we, we uh, ourselves too we want to send our condolences, condolences, condolences to uh, the French families of uh, this journalist. And you know we were speaking, journalists are like the watchmen of of their societies, and like Herzl was a journalist, Eliezer Ben Yehuda was also a journalist. Uh, Yavodinsky was also a journalist. You see, all these people, they could see what was happening. And it's interesting, in France, if you look at the cartoons, they were, they were satiric cartoons, but they were picking up the, the mood of what was happening. And they, could, they were watchmen. They knew that what was happening with Islam was very important and was taking the freedom. And they were fighting freedom with a pen. And I think what's fighting happening, for freedom. fighting for freedom, yeah. And, and I think 
I hope, you know, like yesterday night, suddenly there was 100,000 people outside on the, on the street in France. And uh, they are putting, so I received already on my Facebook, few people putting, je suis Charlie. And it's like to say, I am Charlie, because they want to identify themselves saying, I want freedom too for my country and I want to give freedom. And which is interesting because France also have like égalité, fraternité, uh, liberté, égalité, fraternité, which is our for is like our logo for France and, and like we want to fight for freedom. And, and it's interesting that that's happening in France. And I hope that with all these things, and I was speaking with a good friend today, I hope that these terrible things are going to be an act of redemption for people to wake up and say, okay, we are used to our freedom of speech and we take it for granted and we should never, never, never take it for granted. And I hope that people are going to wake up and, and act, not react, but act and know that they have to take their responsibility and like freedom is very important. And you, you have the names of the, of yes. the 10 journalists or some of not all of them, but not all of them. But but the, the, them. Yeah, the, the major one who are working uh, with uh, Charlie and, I, and, I, and I, I think I think uh, another important thing, very important, what what from what you've been saying mm -hmm. is that we have to understand that uh, journalists are the ones that are uh, speaking to society and saying what's going on, mm -hmm. and Islam directly attacks that because they don't want people to know what's going on. And so uh, it was very strategic that they should attack yes. this magazine. And we might say, well, you know, what's so important about a cartoon? Well, you know, cartoons, uh, from a journalistic point of view, are expressing concern about things. Mm -hmm. And often they might be funny. Uh, we might, they, they but, the, but there is something where, you know, when you put it in a newspaper, when a journalist puts a cartoon in a newspaper, just like a photograph, um, they are choosing that because it's expressing a concern that they have about something and um, it's done in a funny way to help people to understand. So, you know, th this is very serious. Now, I know the National Union of Journalists in the United Kingdom are having a minute's, uh, a minute's silence today even for what's happened and I, I no doubt as the days go by there'll be other things that happen. But uh, we, uh, as watchmen of what's happening in the end times, as people who are, you know, uh, following the news in Israel, and it's our privilege to bring you news stories from Israel and the world so that you know what's going on. And we know that many of you watching today are watchmen. These events are very, very significant. And um, I'm sure that as the days go by, we're going to see more things mm -hmm. come out of this. So you're going to tell us the names of the... Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the name, yeah, to, to honor the people who want to say the name is Stéphane Charbonnier, is the one who was uh, in charge of Charlie Hebdo, Jean Cabu, Georges Wolinski, also a, a Jewish man, Bernard Ver, uh, Verlac, and Bernard Maris. Maris. And uh, they were doing the job, you know, to show, to, to keep freedom, um, to be able to, to speak freely of what they were what they, what they were feeling and and sometimes what the society is feeling so it's very important and and they were you know they were murdered just working just doing their job they yeah. weren't they were not soldiers they were not combatants and they had you know they had even some policemen already who were looking after them but you know the the islamists are ruthless because they went there was a journalist outside and they said to her, you give us the code to go in or we keep, or, I mean, uh, she had a little girl and they were like, you give it to us or, you know, we kill your girl. I don't know exactly how they say it, but it was like for her, she knew that if she didn't do it, they were going to, to kill her daughter. And so, and they just killed the policemen who were just looking after them. It's like, you know, they, it's just well, amazing. You have, your people don't understand what they're dealing with, you see, because there's misinformation yes. in the media. Yes. And even even this uh, the the stories I've told you it says attack on freedom. It's not it's not to be very frank. It's not an attack on freedom. It's a Islamic terrorist attack. Let's let's call it what it is. It was an, a, a terrible Islamic terrorist attack. Now, 
um, just as we're coming to the end of the program, I, you know, I think it's important. It's not something we want to dwell on, but it's something that our, and I know our viewers are very concerned about this, but Islamic terror is a result of Islam. And, you know, I was doing some research just before the program today. It says Islam divides the world, Natalie, into two spheres of influence, the house of Islam called Dar al-Islam and the house of war. That's all there is, folks. The, is, for an Islamist, they see two diff, the two worlds. One is dominated by Islam, and one is and, and, uh, yeah, you, not you, not dominated yeah, by yeah. Islam. And they, there's jihad until the uh, until the whole world is Islamic. There's jihad. Uh -huh. So th this will happen until they uh -huh. get their way. Until we have to understand that, and until that we are, you know, one thing also that I really like because we want to give you hope in the middle of all of that is that. Like, and I like how the Jewish people say, they know also that the time of the Messi when the messianic time comes is like the pangs of the last redemption and is what we are going through right now. But it's like nothing, we, our prayers can change things. And like, you know, it can be very hard or it cannot be so hard. And so our way of praying, our way of action, our way of, of speaking, our way of learning Hebrew, because this is also a weapon, our way to, to read the Torah, to read the Bible, all these things is part of, we can soften the judgment. I had, I don't know how long we have now. Uh, okay, so maybe we'll have to do another program sometime. <laughs> we, we, um, <laughs> we, we have the issue that there's so much to talk about, Natalie, that you could do a whole series of programs, but uh, I know that, um, you know, that the important thing for people to realize is there are events that are happening, and that's the reason we're here for you for the In the Last Days television program to bring you news and events so that you can be a watchman on the wall. Now, it's been great to be with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget you can email us at info at in the last days .com. We love to receive your emails. And remember, we're living in the last days. You've been watching In The Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy to use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter. Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In The Last Days.